It's breathtaking. When you see sand here, imagine water. If you dive in, you can't reach the bottom. You dive in? Yes, it's called swimming. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe you. Dave, one of the things, every time I've interviewed you, the, the, the commitment and that you have for the craft of acting has always blown me away. Thank you. <laughs> and this character, it could have easily, uh, I told this first to sell as well, it could have easily been a just big bad guy like right. you see in all these movies, but there's so much depth to right. this. What, what did you, how did you prepare? How did you find this guy playing in this world, these movies? Um, with Denny's help, <laughs> with Denny's directions, it was uh, through conversations, which is why I love working with some, him so much. Um, uh, so, obviously, I, I read I read the script, and I knew that this character was much more fleshed out. He was much more layered. Um, really, just uh, touched on the surface of who Urban was in the first film, and just got so much deeper in the second film. So. The first day I showed up, I showed up for costume fittings, and then he came to say hello, and I said, well, yeah, let's talk about the character, because we, we do that on every film. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about the character, like, what do you think? I mean, um, and he said, let me dream about it tonight, and I'll tell you tomorrow, which I thought was the best answer I've ever heard in wow. my life. And he said, um, the next day, and I asked him again, he said, um, um, I want you to think of Raban like this. He said, Raban is inherently a coward. And he said, build from that, but always think that Raban is a coward. So everything, all his rage and anger and violence is all coming from an insecure place, um, which really just makes him pathetic. So he's not your typical brute who's just menacing. He's also, there's like layers to him and there's gonna be moments of, when you see it, it come through and it's just moments of vulnerability, which I was I'm surprised to hear, not surprised, but pleasantly surprised to hear that there are moments when you actually feel sympathy for him yeah. <laughs> because he is just so pathetic and you understand that all this rage and anger is really just coming from a place of him trying to seek approval <laughs> and uh, wanting to be loved. <laughs> In the shadows of Arrakis lie many secrets. But the darkest of them all may remain. Uh, I love how your role has expanded. Uh, how? What was it like, kind of building her for the second film and and going into these very dark places? I think the journey of Jessica is so wonderful and powerful, and I think I'm just very grateful that Denny. Of course, I am because it's my role. But I am happy that he wanted to build on her that much and create the sort of the idea that she's the architect behind a lot of these moral complex decisions and, and, and movements. But from an acting point of view, it was great. You know, the darker, the more confusing, the more difficult it is, the more interesting it is for us, or well, me anyway. The end of House Atreides. My father didn't believe in revenge. And you do, hey, this film is, the, the, the second film, it's just, yeah, you do, you have so much to do. What was the hardest part for you kind of jumping into this world, or was there? It, you know, it really wasn't. I wish I had an exciting answer and say that it was super challenging, but it really wasn't because it was so exciting. Like, I was so excited about it. And also, I was just so comfortable with everybody. Yeah. Like, everybody, they just couldn't have made it easier, you know, for an actor with them. Um, with the practical sets and with the talented people and with the costumes and the makeup, they just allow you to be completely immersed in the moment. And that's, I mean, that's what you pray for, especially in films like this, because you don't, it's hard acting with a tennis ball. It's <laughs> hard acting with green screen where you have to just rely completely, you have to depend on your imagination. It makes it much more challenging, but this is everything is so real and you can just get totally lost in the moment. Have you ever had a dream about your first ride? Don't try to impress anyone. I'm watching this film and, and your performance. It's just such a profound work because you're under all this makeup. You're, you're dealing with a villain that could easily be played as a normal uh, uh, brooding villain. There's a human quality to him. How do you pro approach that? Well, it, it's, it's, as you said, he, I wanted him to have a human uh, uh, be a human and have a human body. And even if he's, he's uh, I mean, hundreds of kilos, and that, that enormous body, uh, I, was, I was adamant about him not having sort of 
uh, a Marvel kind of armor and all that stuff because that diminished him. Yeah, I wanted him. He 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 is most most fright, frightening when he's when he's n uh, naked, and or in that very thin pajamas he has. Yeah, and and because you feel his physicality, and he's frightening. Well, because it, yeah, you, you it comes across as more of a, a beast of a man. Yeah, I, working with Denny and and creating this world, what is that like? How how these sets are incredible. How what, how much is practical? How much is I mean, what for you? How much are you living in this world while you're shooting this stuff? Yeah, it's fantastic to to because they they are as much as possible. They are practical. They're real. They're sets. There we have huge, huge sets in 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 uh, in, um, in Budapest to create that world. And it um, and I got a my sets are usually a very fascistic architecture uh, that uh, really would have pleased uh, Mussolini or, or Hitler. Uh, uh, and it it gives you it it lifts you. It gives you a feeling of of power, a power the way. It gave uh, power to Hitler or Mussolini. I feel the same thing, you know. It's 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 fantastic and dangerous. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I'm glad you mentioned that because I, that's what I wondered. Did you find inspiration in leaders like that, Hitler? Yeah, no, I didn't. I actually went further back. Yeah, oh. uh, it, because uh, the novel is is. Uh, it's it's like it's, it, Herbert. He 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 wrote it uh, um, probably doing a lot of drugs <laughs> at the same time, and he was spaced out. Uh, uh, but he also read Machiavelli. Uh, so so it's uh, it's 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 a very Machiavellian world, uh, and uh, the the house Artredis and the house Harkonnen they behave just like like uh, Italian uh, Italian prince houses. Uh, did you know, or or uh, Henry VIII? It's uh, it's it's not a, a moral thing, uh, because it's uh, it's uh, it's it's a world where brutality is a mean necessary mean for power. Nothing fancy. I understand. Nothing fancy. Hey. Well, Denny has a way of creating such realism in his massive films. And I feel like with this film especially, there's such a grounded feel to it. For, for a blockbuster masterpiece type of movie, we're looking at very grounded characters that you sure. understand. Right. How, how is Denny on the set? Just with, in general, is there a lot of rehearsal? Is there a lot of... No, there's really not a lot of rehearsal. There wasn't on this one anyway. We, uh, it was more blocking than anything. Mm. I think we block it. I don't think, I, I don't want to speak for him, but I don't think Denny likes for people to be over rehearsed. Mm. Um, I think, um, but I, you know, I think that's why he's very picky and choosy about who he casts in films. Uh, so there weren't, you know, I think it's more than anything, uh, we kind of block it. And once we block it, we start to uh, perform the scenes and kind of let it develop and find it. And he comes out with direction. And I think it just, it's just him. It's him being an artist and him creating this masterpiece. So it's definitely not uh, something we, uh, I never over rehearsed. Mm. You know, it was just more of a blocking rehearsal and then come on, let's go. Yeah. How much of a relationship do you have with the books? Uh, not a huge relationship at all. I um, wasn't very, when, before, when this movie came about, I was, my awareness of Dune was really from um, the Lynch version of Dune. Yeah. That was when I grew up, that was Dune to me. Um, when this movie came about and I had a conversation with Denny, he's like, I really want to stay true to the novels. I grew up, I'm obsessed with it. I've always wanted to make this film. It's a lifelong dream. So I wanted to read the book. So I ordered the book and started to read it. And I was like, man, this is really deep. <laughs> it's hard for me to get through. Uh, so I got the audio book. And when I listened to the audio book, it's just much easier for me to listen. Uh, I, I learned better verbally. Yeah. And I listened to it and immediately got sucked into it. And I thought, this is amazing. And then when I read the script, I was like, wow, this is really great. Like, he's really doing this justice. He said that. I got that. Thanks. I won't be fighting for him. I'm fighting for my people. You young pop. 
you you hit it. You said you know the moral. People aren't always moral. People aren't always ethical. And most movies paint that picture of oh, there's the good guy. Oh, there's a bad guy. That's not happening here. No, we live here. We live in the frequency in between, um, which I love. You know, you you fall in love with a character, but no one is perfect here. You know, you look at the sort of idea of. of that Johnny and, and Paul at the same time, there's ego and there's need and there's greed and there's belief and there's fundamentalism and there's religion and then there's the emperor and then there's, you know, all of these people just wanting. I guess the one thing we all have in common is the need for our own will to win, right? Uh, it's not about other people, it's about ourselves. All of us are very selfish people. Um, and it makes it very interesting. You know, even though Jessica is wanting the best for her son, she's wanting what she believes is the best for her son, right? Absolutely. Now, were there any, obviously the book is such an important part of this, but were there other influences in, in bringing her to life? Um, I think with Denny, there's such freedom of exploration and playing around and finding characters. You know, the things I do, I do either because it's just natural the way you walk and then you have a director saying, actually try this, it just feels too natural for you. Why don't you break it down and look at an insect or a bug? And all of a sudden that's an inspiration. Or I look at, you know, um, Charlotte Rampling, because of the way she holds herself, she would obviously be very much a teacher for Lady Jessica, so she became one for me without her knowing it. Um, I think for me, I just, I very much look at things I have and take from buckets of, of life, you know? I'm a mother myself, so one of my favorite scenes was in the first film, and I, I kind of have this mannerism of elbows off the table, you know, sit up straight, we're eating breakfast. Um, always that agenda. Paul Atreides is still alive. Going into the second film, you said at the screening that you wanted to go right into it. Mm. How has that experience changed you and what do you think it added to the film? Uh, the, 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 the experience of part one, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I, I learned every film I've, I'm making. I have the impression coming out of it that I've learned everything again. So it's like it's like there's so many things I learned about my craft doing part one because at the time part one was the most ambitious project I have done. Part two was a much more challenging and a, a project because it, technically it was more complex, and I was able to do part two, of course, because of what I have learned on, in part one. Talk about. <sighs> You know, you're connecting these stories from these wonderful books. How do you go about finding? Well, this needs to be here. This need, what was the what was going into part two? What was your? But the thing is that I knew Frank Herbert's intentions. I knew that uh, he, he had uh, uh, he wanted to. Uh, he was disappointed how people perceived the book. Uh, thinking he thought that people thought the readers felt that uh, Paul was a hero, and for him, Paul was an anti-hero, he was a dark figure, so it, uh, he wrote, uh, to correct that, he wrote Dune Messiah, that uh, was like a kind of epilogue to the, uh, to the, the first book, and, and uh, this second book was informing, giving a new uh, light on what he had written. I, I knew that, I knew that story, I, re I had read Dune Messiah, so it did, uh, this uh, uh, helped me a lot to inform, uh, to do my adaptation to be I try to be closer to closer to to, to to his main intention to the initial intention of Frank Herbert I try to be faithful to Frank <laughs> yeah. visually I mean there's this is remarkable uh, how do how do you I, I, I everyone's talking about the practical effects how important was it to you to build this world to really build the world? But it's important because uh, I'm coming. Uh, maybe I'm old school, but I I I I love uh, cinema. For me, is an act of present. I mean, it's like in the present moment, where of course everything is storyboarded, but it's on the in the day when you are with the actors, with the real light, with the real sun, with the the set that you will be inspired and find the best shots. 
and uh, uh, I'm coming from the docu documentary world. I'm, I'm inspired by reality. So I'm, I'm not a, a, a director that feels uh, very comfortable in virtual world. I'm, I'm, I'm old school. So that is why I go the old fashioned way of building as much as we can. And, and, uh, and I think that tremendously helped the actors as well because they can focus on, on, on their uh, inner journey instead of having to deal with the things that doesn't exist around them. That's my way of working and that's the only way I, I know to work, yeah. Nice. And again, like this is just it's just a beautiful film. Uh, why is it was is it difficult for you, kind of going into this big? You're doing three films. You're doing you're, it's a big world. You've done pretty much then. This is you haven't really gone the let's do a franchise route. Is it is it weird to go into that? But it's not the way I approached it. Honestly, I at, at first. I I, uh, I uh, embarked and embark in the journey of adapting the book Dune. Then I realized quickly that, and, and the studio agreed with me, that it will be dangerous to try to do one movie because the story is too complex. So I decided to, to cut it, the first book, in two movies, part one and part two of the first book, that uh, the adaptation of the first book. And, and uh, then doing those movies, I envisioned that it could be a great idea to finish Paul's arc, Paul Atreides' story, by making an adaptation of Dune Messiah. So it's like, it's just that uh, trying to finish the story, it, but I never um, approach it as, as a, 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 let's say, a franchise. I don't think I, uh, I think it will be healthy for me to stop at one point <laughs> and, and to do something else. Eh? I love Dune, I love, but uh, say there's a, a I, I will stop when I feel I will have nothing else to say about it, about this world there. Eh? He who can destroy a thing has the real control of it.